Hi there, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about gardening, botanical history, and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer E. Blaine, and today is April 19th. Today, we celebrate a botanist remembered with the Haworthia genus. We'll also learn about a botanist who spent 25 years researching the forests of the eastern United States. We'll hear about the Greek goddess of spring from the author Jen Kalanita. And we grow that garden library today with a book about flower arranging, and then we'll wrap things up with National Garlic Day. But first, here's today's curated news. Today's curated news comes to us from House and Garden, and they are sharing six incredible recipes by Erin Bertelson from the gardens of Great Dixter. Now, every spring, I'm always on the lookout for new recipes that I can use with my garden harvest and especially my kitchen garden. Aaron writes, seasonality is key for me. There is something really nice about waiting until it's the right time for fruit and vegetables and celebrating their moment. I am not a trained chef, but a home cook. So these recipes are based around the sort of food I like to eat every day. So Aaron's six recipes include easy tarragon chicken. There's a tuna salad recipe with potato and anchovy. There's a fabulous leek and stilton tart, a recipe for fritters. And then for dessert, two options, a pear tart or beetroot and chocolate cake. And of course, they all look fabulous. Now, if you would like to check out this post by Erin, all you need to do is search for the word recipe in the Facebook group for the show, and then this post will pop right up. And while we're on the topic of the Facebook group, let me take a second and welcome some of the people that have joined in the past three weeks. We've had a lot of people join the group, so I want to break this up so that the list doesn't get too long. But I also want to make sure to give a shout out to everyone who joins the group on the show. So with that, let me welcome Donna Roth, Beverly Wu, Dominic McBroom, Susan Stone, Gina Tice, Penny Meyer, Louisa Cameron, Brittany Campbell, Brittany Horst, Judy Shaw, Susie Downing, Jean Anthony, Barbara May, Caitlin Manning, and Diane Davis. Welcome to all of you to the Facebook group to the show. Now, if you're not in the group and you'd like to join, you have a standing invitation and it is so easy to find this group. All you need to do is head on up to the search bar and type in the words Daily Gardener Community where you'd search for a friend and then request to join. I'd love to meet you in the group. It's time for today's botanical history. botanical history for today, April 19th. Today is the birthday of the British entomologist and botanist Adrian Hardy Haworth, who was born on this day, April 19th in 1797. Adrian was trained to be a lawyer, but once he inherited his family's estate, he devoted himself to the study of natural sciences. Today, the Haworthia genus, named by the French botanist Henri Duval, honors Adrian Hardy Haworth. The genus consists of around 200 different species, and today, Haworthias are very, very popular. These plants are native to South Africa and they're succulents, and they range in color from transparent green to all shades of purple and even black. And Haworthias can be very different in terms of shape and texture. Now, one of the most popular Haworthias is the Haworthia fasciata, or the zebra succulent. 
Known for its zebra stripes, this succulent has green pointy leaves with bumps of white tubercles arranged in a zebra pattern. And one of the reasons that the zebra succulent is so popular is that it's so easy to grow. And this plant is ubiquitous. It is everywhere. In fact, you've probably seen it in the houseplant section at your nearest big box store. And as for Adrian Hardy Howarth, he's also remembered for his work as an entomologist. In the early 1800s, Adrian wrote one of the most authoritative works on British butterflies and moths, and his book was called Lepidoptera Britannica. And in his lifetime, Adrian named 22 new genus of moths. And he was also a carcinologist or a shrimp expert. And finally, Adrian was the very first person to describe the Epiphyllum oxypetalum, commonly known as Dutchman's Pipe Cactus, Queen of the Night, or the Night Blooming Sirius, one of my favorite plants. And today is the birthday of the botanist, ecologist, and expert on deciduous forests of the eastern United States, E. Lucy Braun, who was born on this day, April 19th in 1889. Now, the E in Lucy's name stood for Emma, but she always went by Lucy. In 1950, Lucy was the first woman elected president of the Ecological Society of America. A quiet, bright, and dedicated field scientist, Lucy worked as a botany professor at the University of Cincinnati. Lucy became interested in the outdoors as a child. Growing up on May Street in Cincinnati, Lucy's parents would take her and her older sister Annette by horse-drawn streetcar to the woods in Rose Hill so that they could spend time botanizing. The girls were taught to identify wildflowers by their mother, and they also gathered specimens for their mother's herbarium. Now, the girls both got PhDs, Lucy in botany and Annette in zoology, and they never married. Instead, they lived together their entire lives, leaving their childhood May Street home for a home in Mount Washington. The sisters turned the upstairs of the house into a laboratory, and the gardens outdoors became their field laboratory. Now, Lucy was a go-getter, and at the age of 80, she was still leading people on field trips in and around Ohio. Friends of Lucy recounted, To be with her in the field was something. She made everything so real, so exciting, and she was just so knowledgeable. Rain wouldn't stop her. She could walk forever. And Lucy herself said, Only through close and reverent examination of nature can humans understand and protect its beauties and wonders. When asked about her time in the field, Lucy would happily recount how she managed to dodge moonshiner stills in the hills of Kentucky and how she gathered up plant specimens previously unseen by the botanists of her time. Lucy had tremendous dedication to her work as a botanist. Over a period of 25 years, she drove over 65,000 miles to study the forests of the eastern United States. Lucy's heart really belonged to the forests, and her book, Deciduous Forests of Eastern North America, is still regarded as a definitive text. When she died of heart failure in March of 1971 at the age of 81, Lucy was one of the top three ecologists in the United States. 
And after her death, her herbarium of nearly 12,000 specimens was acquired by the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. It's time for today's Unearthed Words. Today's Unearthed Words come to us from the American author Jen Kalanita from her book, Go the Distance. Her mother, Demeter, may have handled some of the harvests and the soil's fertility, but making the world bloom fell to Persephone. Every spring equinox, she'd wander into the orchards and the meadows and put her personal touch on all that came alive. She made the yellow grass turn green with envy. She coaxed every poppy and asphodel bud to awaken from their slumber and shower the landscape in color. She made sure the olive groves flourished and the figs ripened with honey-like nectar so that the smell of them baking wafted up to Mount Olympus. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Just Add Water by Cynthia Galen Bigany. This book came out in 2020 and the subtitle is Easy Techniques and Everyday Ideas for Inspiring Flower Arrangements. In this book, Cynthia shares tips and tutorials for how to create gorgeous designs with beautiful flowers. Whether you're a designer, a gardener, or simply want to make gorgeous bouquets, Cynthia's book shares the secrets to flower arranging. Cynthia teaches popular aspects of arranging, like repurposing everyday containers in unexpected ways and using rubber bands and tape to spectacular effect. And Cynthia offers 10 easy techniques and 20 featured bouquets, along with step-by-step instructions. And she also teaches how to extend the lifespan of wilting flowers. This book is 128 pages of simple techniques and easy ideas for flower arrangements that you can create in minutes. You can get a copy of Just Add Water by Cynthia Galen Bigany and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $13. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today is National Garlic Day. It's observed every year on April 19th. Garlic, or stinking rose, is a member of the lily family. Onions, leeks, and shallots are also in the family. And this time of year, wild garlic, or ransoms, are returning to the woodlands, hedgerows, and riverbanks. And wild garlic is also called bear's garlic. Folklore says that bears eat wild garlic after hibernation. However, if cows graze on wild garlic, it will taint the milk with garlic flavor. Now, wild garlic is a favorite foraged seasonal ingredient of top chefs. And it's not just a foundational ingredient of cooking. Garlic, in all its forms, is also useful for medicinal purposes. Garlic has antibiotic properties, and it also helps reduce blood pressure and cholesterol. Herbalists recommend garlic as a remedy for colds. And Gilroy, California, is known as the garlic capital of the world. The American cowboy and actor Will Rogers said this about Gilroy. 
It's the only place in America where you can marinate a steak just by hanging it out on a clothesline. It's very hot. And Atlas Obscura wrote an article two years ago about Gilroy. They were featuring Gilroy's unique recipes for garlic by featuring a garlic ice cream. And they wrote, the dessert divides ice cream lovers. Well, that is not hard to imagine. And one online reviewer was very diplomatic about the garlic ice cream. And they wrote, actually, the garlic ice cream is pretty good, but a little does go a long way. In case you're wondering, the Gilroy Garlic Festival is held every year in July. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Maple Grove and Wyoming, Minnesota, with the help of Paige Mance, Brooke Beerbaum, and Eric Begay. If you want to read today's show notes, just head on over to thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. And don't forget that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. Last but not least, you can always get in touch by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.